the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. As I was driving down the hill, and I just began to bawl, and I began to thank him, you know, for for warning me and for for saving me for the road, you know, from from going down the road I was going on, and uh, and then on the inside I was aware that there was a big difference, and I can see the relation to the adults mm. that I used to watch in school how this was real. Right, 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 right. And uh and personal. And so <laughs> I get all the way down the hill and I'm in a in a neighborhood that's not so friendly. And uh I'm look up and I'm just praising God in my car. Tears, snot, everything. Just just bawling and, and just thanking God and giving him glory. And there's a car of four people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I should say four, four enemies, so to say. And it seemed like everything slowed down. Now I'm driving and it looks like they're all looking at me. And I'm praising God and I heard a voice. Are you going to stop praising me so that they won't see? Woo! Okay. And so I had a choice. And so I just kept on giving God praise and glory. And them dudes was, I mean, they had the gas face on and they were looking at me all mean and stuff. And then when they really were able to see me, it was like, this dude crazy, we might wanna leave <laughs> alone or something. Because they kind of like just turned away and kept going. And then that's when I just blew up because uh -huh. I knew it was real then. Because it wasn't, it wasn't for them. Yeah. It was just for me, and I didn't care if they saw me crying, you know, being less than what was known as a, a man, you know, street cred and all that other stuff. And so then I just, I just immediately got so excited, and I drove, and I was my sister lived down across from that area, and I was heading in that direction. So I went over there because I just had to tell somebody. Yeah, tell somebody. Had to had to witness. Uh-huh. So I go busting in our house and I'm I'm saying, I'm saving. Everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy. Woo -hoo -hoo. And then I realized the person who had been praying for me all this time. Come on now. Was my mom. <laughs> and I mean, she used to be on her knees early in the morning, like an alarm clock, waking people up in the house, just giving God prayer, just asking to save her children you know, to keep us safe, you know, and, and so on and so forth, and just wailing and, and speaking in tongues and, and the whole nine, just honoring me every morning. And so I had that in my mind when I told my sister and her husband, and they looking at me like, you know, this boy that lost his mind. I hopped in my car and I drove up the hill. Come on. And I come busting in the door to tell my mom, I said, mama, mama. She said, my baby's saved. <laughs> and, and everything that I wanted to tell her just went out the door. And I'm in shock that she knew. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm like, God told you. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> and so, man, we just rejoiced in everything. And there was a, a true hunger for the word, for understanding. And, uh, Unfortunately, I didn't get it. Mm. Well, okay, let me, let, me, let me help you out with something. I, I understand all that. Okay, so turn to Philippians chapter 1. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We have to be careful now that we don't, uh, that our understanding of something doesn't conflict. In Philippians chapter 1, this is what this was called. Right. Uh, he says, uh, after his introduction in verse 2, he says, Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy 
for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, okay. that he who has begun a good work in you okay. will perform it okay. mm -hmm. until Jesus Until uh-huh come the old folks that come hell or high water, but come what may <laughs> he will. Uh-huh. He goes on to the end in chapter 2, verse number 13, it says, For it is God which worketh in you. Mm. Both the not you. Uh -huh. It can't leave it up to you. It's God that worketh in you. Mm-hmm. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Mm -hmm. Now that said, this thing it has to be God wrong. Okay. Amen. Okay. And all I'm saying is, now we can go through things that condition us to change our priority, whereby things get pushed down to a lower level, but that ain't God. That's the call. That that's the choices that we make. Okay. Yeah. You don't you don't have to because you ain't listen. There are some folk when they ain't getting true, do crazy stuff. Like I ain't gonna eat or sleep until you. <laughs> There'll be some men who books I read that did some crazy stuff. Wasn't getting fed, who declared I ain't gonna eat or sleep or do nothing until I hear from you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And all I'm saying is, in spite of all the circumstances that we are confronted with under the variety of different experiences that men have, I believe that once the Spirit of God rests upon you and dwells in you and begins to do what he do. You don't have to worry about getting hungry. Hmm. What you got to decide is how long, and, and like in my case, I, I, I can honestly testify that, that since that day I sat in that church and was brought on the conviction by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. I, listen, I, listen, I've been through some serious rough stuff. Okay. But, but God has never let my hunger or thirst or panic from him win. It, 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 it's not something that I have to I have to conjure up. It's not something that I have to get. It is it's just there. What I have to do is decide what not I'm gonna honor. Yeah. Right. right. Decide what not and I see. So I arranged my life like this. This is how I live my life. I told God. I will offer some promotions at Robin Air Force Base. I said, look. I don't want to get in no position where you cannot continue to have the first place in my life. Ooh. I want to live in such a way that I don't care what happens. I can drop what I'm doing. Come on. The nature of it, how serious it is. I don't ever want to get in a place where I can get I can get bound up and can't get to your, your movement in my life. So I don't want no job. Mm. Mm. I don't want no situation that's going to ever get in the way of that. Wow. And I've lived my whole life that way. I tell people, so, so when, I, when I got in the Union Road, when I finally, finally realized God was calling me to pray, I said, look, you can call me. You can call me at 2 o'clock. You can call me at 5 o'clock. You can call me if I just got off work. It don't matter. Because you see, understand, see, I understand that God is calling me to this. Yeah. There was a song that was written years ago. And when I heard that, when I just hear that song, I just, just cry, man. People are like, why you get so upset with that song? That song says, Lord, I'm available oh, yes, yes, to yes. you. You see, in that song, we don't say when we're available. Hmm. We imply that we are unconditionally available to God. Which is exactly what he did when he redeemed us. He secured to himself our unconditional availability. Mm -hmm. And I just, I listen, and so my whole life has been in my wife when he should tell you that Negro structure this life. Uh -huh. But God has priority. Yeah. Anything else, everything else can get pushed aside. I just think, for me, I just think that that's what Christ really was coming to secure. Surrender and unavailability. But in terms of, in terms of, you see, initially God starts you off with milk. Okay. And if you and if you follow your thirst and obey your thirst, it's going to take you to that place of hunger. 
Mm-hmm. For something deeper. Because you got to eat. Right. Then you shall not live by bread alone. 